All right, let's talk about uh, content planning. So I want to look at it broadly. Like, so you've got content on your website. Yep. You've got social media content that you produce. Yep. You've got email content. So what are some what are things that businesses should think about that are moving to that are expanding to different regions on yeah. their content strategy? Yeah. So one of the questions we've gotten quite a few times is a company comes to us and they say, "Hey, we have a really uh, this is a real example. We have a real strong presence <coughs> in Chicago, and we serve the state of Illinois, and we just bought a company in Texas." And now we need to market ourselves in Texas. So now as a marketer, I've got two non-contiguous geographic areas. That's, that's a challenge. That was a real challenge with Google. Now it's gotten a lot easier uh, with some of the improvements they've made on the admin screen of Google My Business. But uh, one of the questions that came up for them was, do we need different social channels for Illinois versus Texas? And so we, the way we landed with that program was we said no to creating different social channels. Right. It was an advantage that they were a national company with national reach. And so we just leaned into that and said, we're not going to have 50, uh, when we're in 50 states, we're not going to have 50 different sets of social channels. We're not going to have 150 social channels. Uh, but we are going to have uh, 50 offices, uh, maybe not 50, maybe eventually 30, right. and state the service area, the one, two, three state service area for each of those, probably two different offices in California uh, eventually. So you're going to end up with maybe, you know, 20 to 30 offices. So whatever your whatever your eventual footprint of map pins is going to be for offices is your strategy for your maps listings and your content on your website. Yep. Standalone page for every office location, very thorough articulation of service area on that location page and on that Google My Business profile <clears throat> page or listing. And uh, then you can develop ongoing content on your own website that is linking to your location page that might be relevant. Like if you have a case study page and it's relevant to a, a handful of locations, right. link to those pages with a keyword rich link. Uh -huh. And then on your social media, you're kind of going the other direction. You're saying, hey, shout out to our <coughs> California team. Look at this cool project they did. So you're actually going reverse on social and email by highlighting something that's more local because right. there you've got control even if it, of the message. Even if it's on one roll-up account. Even if it's on one roll-up account, you're saying shout out to the team in California. Look at this great project. And that way, that's an environment where you're not creating confusion for yeah. SEO or in your Google Maps yeah. by having you know weird stuff like the Miami office serving California. You yeah. know, you're not creating confusion. It's, it's more streamlined. Uh, but it's just a shout out to something that's more regional, and so, but, yeah. but you know, it's building would, inbound links to that Cal California yeah. locations page too. I, yeah, I would say the, for businesses that don't operate under a franchise model, where there's individual owners under the yeah. same different owners under the same brand. It probably usually makes sense to just keep it with one profile and not try to spin up. If you got 30 locations across the state that are owned and across the U.S. that are owned and operated, don't try to create. 30 local profiles because it's just unmanageable. Yeah, yeah. What we've always done and recommended is a cooperative marketing program where those owners are putting dollars into a marketing fund in, the, fran in the franchise model. In a, yeah. in a franchise or an independent ownership model. Either right. of those. It, well, which I guess is just another kind of franchise. But yeah, for any of those, we think that uh, it's often counterproductive. <clears throat> And this is, you know, this is a little bit just the programs that we've happened to work with. It could be, it could be different, you know, for a number of franchises. But I think consumers get really confused if they see something like, you know, I, I, I don't want to go head to head with anybody on this, but like social channels for like Serta Pro Painters Nashville. Yeah. To me, we, like, it's like a weird we, deal in the social space to have thousands of we did a, things like that. Yeah, we did a we did a campaign for a restaurant, um, fast casual restaurant that's known yes. nationally. I believe that they, was a model in that campaign. And that you were, and they have they have a number of locations in Nashville, and they did that model, and it's kind of strange because people identify with the greater brand because it's more well known, but they yeah. don't really identify with like this specific location. So social was always yeah odd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so I always lean away from that, but yeah, I think I think uh, when you're growing a brand into additional regions there are lots of implications for your marketing channels and they all play out differently all right awesome all right that was good and i hope that was helpful if you're ever if you're looking to expand in another region uh this is some good stuff here to just go through watch again once you yeah. start expanding and start check those things off the list and hope that was helpful yep and matt if you're watching this we've got all this stuff covered for you don't worry about it
<laughs> and uh, everybody, uh, follow us on social media. Uh, check us out Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn. Follow us, subscribe, comment, send us your questions. And uh, that's it. We'll see you on the next one. Everyone have a great rest of the day. Later, later.